uh, consider the function given below. y equals negative 3 halves x minus 5 if x is between negative 8 and negative 2. y equals negative 2 if x is between negative 2 and 5. y equals x minus 7 uh, if x is between 5 and 9. And again, this is what we're going to be graphing over here to the left of the problem, and this is where. That's what happens when we're working with a piecewise function, and I don't know if I'm going to even draw it in here in Edmentum. I want to show you this particular problem on um, paper to kind of get you going in the right direction. Um, if you possibly have access to graph paper, uh, it might be helpful for you. Um, but I am going to flip over here to graph paper to work this problem out. And um, so there's my graph. I have the problem written down. So if you notice that two out of the three pieces here, and I didn't put this in, but two out of the three pieces are in the format of y equals mx plus b. And I'm just going to start with this very top uh, equation. Slope is negative 3 halves. Just a reminder that slope is rise over run. Our y-intercept, abbreviated as b, is negative 5. Um, but when I teach this on a smart board in school, what this says is that we can only graph this line, and it's going to be a slanted line, between negative 8 and negative 2. So if I mark this up down here, between negative 8 and negative 2, that's the only place we can graph. So I know you can't see this anymore, um, but when we start to graph this, we start at b equals negative 5. That's the y-intercept. So if we come over here to negative 5, that doesn't fall in our guidance guidelines. I'm still going to make a little mark on there. I'll probably erase it. So important to write in pencil. Because slope is negative 3 over 2. So we're going to go down 3 to the right 2. But that's the wrong direction for us. We can only graph between here and here for this first piece. So down 3 and to the right 2 is the same thing as up 3 and to the left 2. So we can put a mark right there. And then we're going to keep going. Up 3 to the left 2. Up 3 to the left 2. Up 3 to the left 2. So We've got a point here, we've got a point here, we've got a point here, and a point here. And we want all of those points. We don't want the point on the y-axis here. So I just tried to erase it a little bit. I don't want to erase too much, but I did try to erase it. When we go back up here, negative 8 is less than x. So we go to negative 8 on our graph. Because it's a less than, our point at negative 8 is going to have an open circle. And that's how I write it. If we go back and look at the problem, x is less than or equal to negative 2. Because there's an equals at negative 2, we're going to have a solid circle. And I'm sorry, I'm not using a ruler. But there's our first piece. Now, when we go back and look at the problem, negative 2 is less than x is less than 5. That's where we're going to graph. So I'm going to change colors here from negative 2 to positive 5. That's the only places, oh, you can't see it, negative 2 to positive 5. That's the only places we're going to be graphing y equals negative 2 and just a reminder that y equals negative 2 is a horizontal line. So y equals negative 2. 
we're going to go from here, horizontal line, over to our other red mark. Can't see it. We went from here, starting at our left red line, drawing a horizontal line over to our other red. But what I need to look at back here when at the where part of the graph is that there's no equals on this part and there's no equals on this part. Now, technically that would mean that this is an open circle, except that it's already filled in from our last piece as a filled in circle. So we're going to leave that, but this point here at the boundary here at 5 is going to have an open circle again because this is x is less than 5. No equals on that. So we have one more piece to graph on this particular problem. At x minus 7, this is also in slope intercept form. Our slope is 1 over 1. The number front of x, the in front of x is a 1. It doesn't have to be written. Our y-intercept is negative 7. And we only want to graph in here between 5 and 9. So I need to switch colors again. But between 5, you can almost see it, between 5 and 9. Because there's a starting point and an ending point, this is going to be a line segment as was the all three of them actually all three pieces but that's the only places that we're going to graph there's not going to be an arrow at the end uh, again i recommend that you use pencil because negative seven is down here which isn't in between these two parts right here but i am going to make a little mark on there and then slope rise one run one Rise one, run one. Rise one, run one. I'm not making a mark here because we're not within the part where we're supposed to be graphing. Rise one, run one. Rise one, run here. So there's the first mark. I'll put a little dot in there because we already have an open circle there. And then I'm going to keep going. Rise overrun, rise, overrun, up one to the right one, up one to the right one. So we can connect these parts of where we're allowed to graph. And then on the endpoints, we need to determine what kind of uh, circles, whether they're going to be open or closed. Well, 5 is less than x, at 5, we're going to have an open circle, which we do. And then x is less than or equal to 9 is going to be a closed circle because there's going to be an equal. And here is our piecewise graph. Um, the video is already too long, so I'm not going to go back and put it into Edmentum, but I hope that that made some sense for you.